here's the guts. Drop that in the bucket. There's two. See, up there there's two eggs. At this point, we have none of our adult quail left. Pretty much we made the determination that we gotta give up on quail right now. We've done this before. We had quail, then we quit on quail, then we got quail again, now we quit on them again. The short moral of the story is if you're going to go with quail, which are small, go big, get a lot. Make it worth your while. Make sure you're getting a ton of eggs, Make sure you're able to incubate as many eggs as you possibly can each round that you're doing them and just crank out a whole bunch of them. If you're gonna have a couple quail, just as pets, fine. But if you're trying to make it a worthwhile homestead animal, don't just have a couple, you gotta go big. That's the moral of the story. Recently I took off for a couple days for work. I left my family with a charge. My, the charge I gave them was kill all the quail. Kill them, get them done, process them, eat them, whatever. So I left my camera at home with them and they shot some footage of what they were up to and, uh, and then now I came home. So let's take a look at what they shot and then I'll tell you a little bit more about this story. Okay, the gizzard, the heart, and the liver. Thank you, boys. These are the quail. We finished butchering them here, and these ones aren't that big. 
these ones we were keeping for like eggs and stuff but we didn't have enough of them to really make it worth it because we were just buying feed for them and right now we're heading into fall here soon and um, they're not going to be laying any eggs this whole winter time and then we didn't really have enough to be eating them um, but we butchered up these ones because we just decided that we were going to be done with the quail for now and then um, if we want to start back up we'll just get a bunch of eggs from someone and incubate those and um, we weren't getting enough eggs really from them to be putting in a whole bunch of eggs at one time and then getting a bunch of baby quail we were just getting 10 eggs a day maybe I mean not very many because we didn't have that many quail and then we do have 10 or 11 baby quail that are in the incubator right now and then some more eggs that should be hatching soon but we uh, butchered up all of our old quail and then um, as far as I know we're gonna butcher the ones in the incubator also when they get bigger um, but these are the quail after we finished butchering them we butchered 11 quail and it went pretty well okay we're getting the last few here rinsed off Of the quail, and then we're gonna take them on inside. And we saved the hearts, the gizzards, and some of the livers also for eating. Sometimes we'll fry them up in some oil. We'll put them in. We've put them in the Zatarain's fish fry before and put them in the pan and just fried them up. But they're pretty good when we fry them up. And then we've can pressure canned some of our chicken gizzards. And we put those in gravy before and those are really good. So we're gonna have the quail that we butchered yesterday and probably we're gonna put some potatoes in there or something and then we're just gonna put it in this big pan and um, put it in the oven and that's gonna be our lunch we're probably gonna season it with a few things I'm not exactly sure we're probably gonna put some salt and some rosemary on it and um, I am excited to eat it because I like quail and I like potatoes like cook like that so that's what we're gonna have for lunch today potatoes are you doing?
put it in your eyes. Nitas, you gotta keep it. Hurry up, Nitas. Sephora, you're doing a lot of chopping over there. What's going on, little girl? Potatoes. Whoa, you already washed potatoes? Yes. Wow, you're amazing. That might be enough potatoes. Mm-hmm. Oh, keep Just do the two potatoes on the left. And then you put olive oil on it. And then he put seasonal, and oh, so it stuck on so good. And I was eating a whole bunch of it raw. I mean, because it's cauliflower. Mm -hmm. But it was good cooked too. And then that was a lot of olive oil. I don't know. I was trying to make it come out slower. But oh well. It's all stuck in these clumps, so it doesn't really come out. How about you shake it up really hard first? Get it on counter or something. What temperature is the oven at? For her. Mom, how long should I cook it for? Put it in there for So here's the quail and so here's the quail and the potatoes when they're cooked. I mean, I'm gonna make sure they're cooked because we checked last time and they weren't. So um, they've been cooking for a while now and it looks really good. So how I'm gonna check it is I'm just gonna see how I, um, what color juices come. Um, they are in oil, so potatoes are done. I mean, that's easy to tell they're done, so. Whoa. I mean, that looks done. So this is done, and it looks really good. Wow, so I just watched the video up to this point, and I'm gonna record an outro. <laughs> Mama Pepper's cooking in the background right now, but that was absolutely awesome for a number of reasons. Um, just to start off with, I do wanna say, that my children are a very big blessing to us. We've put a lot of time and effort into them. 
but to watch a group like that come together and take these animals, I mean, they've done the chores on these animals. They've reproduced a lot of these animals, making sure that they're breeding appropriately. They've incubated a lot of these eggs, and then they're gonna sit there and butcher them all, and then cook them all, and then film it all. And even, you know, watching Pinky Pepper, Red Pepper, make sure to be getting the shots right, make sure to be getting the stuff in, um, and kind of putting that together in such a way. It was just really cool to review that footage and do that. Um, I know recently I was talking about a potential channel split. I think at the moment, what I'm gonna do is just create um, one that I show shorter fishing clips on and kind of keep my channel the same. We'll just organize in some different playlists, um, just some different categories of content for you guys and uh, do that. But one suggestion that's come up a lot from people is that we need to share some information on just raising our children. And even after watching that, all the interaction, the way they got things done, um, I don't want to have my children be like that and have people out there being like, what can I do to get my children to be similar to yours and not provide that information? So that's definitely something we're going to do. Um, back to quail for a moment. <laughs> um, yeah, we just didn't have enough. If you're going to have quail, you're going to want to be able to run at least a full incubator or a couple incubators and yeah, keep too. reproducing Cycling and them. printing. And then every, what do they take, 8 to 10 weeks, Pinky? Yeah, 10. About 10, 10 weeks, weeks to get up to, like you know, from incubator size to whatever and just be full really size. running and printing them. Um, also, you know, heading into winter, a lot of people don't do any quail during the winter. They might keep a couple breeders and stuff through the winter, like have their sets, but a lot of people just kill them all at the end of the year butcher them all, uh, put them all up. We know people who can them, we know people who freeze them. Um, and then just kind of the next spring, just buy a bunch of eggs and just start going and getting your ones up to, you know, full adult size. When they start laying eggs, make sure that you've got the appropriate number of males to females, which we would normally go about five females to one male, right? Something like that. And then they would, you know, cull all their extra males right away and then they're printing their own eggs and just kind of beef that up and go from there. Um, that's what we haven't done yet. We have not, you know, been massive producing with quail. I know people who raise quail too and they talk about, you know, they love quail, they like them, they do them right. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys know who you are, you know who you are. If you yeah. watch our channel, we've, you know, met you, talked to you. But also, in that grand scheme of things, um, they still, you know, cull every winter. We know some people do that. And then they also say if things really go bad, quail are the first thing to go on the homestead. Um, that they're not going to be worried about getting that feed and other things. Yeah, so that's something you got to factor into it too. Is it an animal you can free range if things get really bad? Is it an animal you can produce feed for it on your own? Or are you always going to be dependent upon buying it? Because if you're planning for the future, if you're planning for semi-apocalyptic events if you're planning on a shutdown of sales of things a restriction of travel you got to look at what you can do from your own property and quail are one of those that even you know people who really do a good job at them say they're the first to go you know chickens guineas other things can reproduce after their own kind without an incubator very well um, a lot of the breeds can of chickens and that's something that we definitely like being able to do too because you always get a better return on your investment the less you invest in it. So the less you invest in feeding them, and the less you invest in being the one incubating the eggs, if they'll do it themselves, you always get a better return on your investment. Right? But mm -hmm. you guys have done amazing with the incubator. Um, just learning how to use it. I don't really know how to use the incubators here. That's been a Mama Pepper project. And, and the kids. As we've moved forward with that, it's been mostly Pinky Pepper um, and the children, you know, mm -hmm. taking care of that for us, which is, which is absolutely awesome. Another thing to remember is just to use it all. Um, <clears throat> whatever eggs you're not incubating, be eating. You can pickle them, you can do other things, but eat them up. We found that if you hard boil them, and I think what, you put them in boiling water for two a minute, minutes. two minutes, and then put them immediately in cold ice water. And Monster Truck found if you've got one there and you just roll it across the table, that hard boiled egg that's been chilled, the whole eggshell cracks like crazy where you can peel the whole thing off. If you just kind of ding, 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 and try to peel it, it's, it's a mess. So just roll that whole shell, crack that whole thing up, and then peel it off from there. That works really good. And then even when you butcher, the kids were talking, you know, we've got the meat, but we've got the gizzards, we got the livers, we got the hearts, and even that, if you have a bunch that you like pulled the meat off for something, 
Then you can make a bone broth with all those carcasses or some soup stock or something like that. Always try to use things to the fullest extent you can and get as much out of it as you possibly can. Like even you like chicken food, uh, chicken feet mm -hmm. for uh, for chicken broth. For chicken broth. Just because it makes such a nutritious broth. Yeah. So I don't want to miss out on nutritious broth for my family. <laughs> we were talking with some people earlier and they were talking about helping others when they need and like, yeah, like, yeah, if you got a bunch of chickens, they were talking to somebody else and you need them butchered, let us know, we'll help. But don't be surprised if my wife asks for the feed or something like that. Or And I mean, I've been over places before where all of a sudden a, a, a whole beef head gets thrown in the burn pile and the tongue's hanging out of the mouth and I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna let that tongue sit there because I'm not showing up, you know, to Mama Pepper and saying, hey, I saw a tongue get pitched away because we like lingua. I would we say like... you better jump in there and go get it. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed my knife and I, you know, I don't know, here's a little one, but I grabbed my knife and I went into that head and I cut that tongue out and brought it home for my lady. I'm not gonna let a cow tongue go to waste. We'll eat that. <laughs> Because tongue tacos are amazing. It's a delicacy around here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Take it when you can get it. But yes, I also think that with quail right now, it's just not a good season for us. You know, with our yeah. little guy and just seven little ones, it's just not a good season of time for us with the quail. But we do enjoy them. So that is the reason why we gave up on quail last time. Yeah, I meant to have that for the video, Pinky. Thank you. Pinky knows we've got stuff going on. Let's see. I'm gonna hold it there. Can you touch the screen where it is? That's one thing too with this girl here. Yeah. She sits there and made sure to set up a bunch of those shots really good for her filming and stuff like that. We gotta write the script for your book, daughter, so we can get that out there. Um, so we're gonna do that soon, but you know, Pinkie Pepper's our oldest. She's one of seven. She's 11 right now. And if you look, she's pretty much ready for a lot of life, you know. She can raise animals, she can breed animals, reproduce them, run incubators, butcher them, take care of them. She does a lot of medic stuff for us here. And these are some of the little ones. We don't have many because we didn't run that many eggs. We and have five little we ones. We have five right now, ouch. And even, yeah, you saw that. I got to, they saved a meal for me, a quail, which you saw me kind of eating in the intro. Um, not that we haven't culled them before, not that we haven't um, enjoyed some meals off of them, but by the end of it, we pretty much got a meal for our family out of what we had. We're gonna run up a couple of these, let them finish what quail feed we have, and then, you know, from there, this guy will probably jump if I let it, so I'm not trying to let it, but super cute little quail. There you go. So we do still have five on our homestead, but also we got a big culling to come up. Um, we got like 30 some roosters to get rid of, we just separate it pooped on my hand. We have 30 roosters and then we're gonna choose what ones we wanna keep out yeah. of 30. And we'll probably keep at most three or four. We gotta reduce our hens too, so. That's a little bit of it guys. Um, as far as channel split, I'm gonna rename the PP Fishing Channel. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm gonna do Woo! is I'm just gonna categorize some stuff in playlists below. Um, that just makes our content easier to sort through. I've got some old playlists from a while that I need to redo, um, put ones that are more current, better, and things like that. And then uh, I gotta get back to work outside on my main projects here too. I'll see how work and balancing goes, but I'm getting very close to pouring a concrete lid on my root cellar and beginning the uh, outdoor, kitchen? outdoor kitchen build. And once that root cellar is poured, I'll put a door on there and we'll start using it while I build the rest of it. So that's coming up. Thank you for your patience with me. And also, we'll work on some stuff about um, just raising and training children. Cause I know that's something even, a guy left a comment in one of our previous videos. He says, after meeting us and watching us, they made an eight hour trip to spend, you know, a week off and on with us as they stayed nearby and tried to have some overlapping life just to get some insight into our life and why our children are the way that they are what we've done in our parenting to raise them. And that's one thing that we like is overlapping life, you know, and getting a peek into people's life helps. Um, a lot of times we find school is trying to reproduce real life skills in a sterile environment. The sterile environment's not where life is lived. Um, a lot of times church, you know, doesn't allow for body function because it's a sterile environment. Uh, life is lived in, in reality. At least we can give you glimpses into our life 
and share those portions with and I don't think that's necessarily a sterile environment but we'll, we'll work on that too because for years people have been asking I always kind of feel unworthy of sharing stuff but the more comments we get even we had multiple comments today by a couple people like wow just talking about the children um, so that said the end result of our parenting has not yet been proven but you can see how far we've gotten and things do seem to be pretty well going so you guys have asked you shall receive and we'll move forward from there Papa out Thank you for watching